Hi, this is Rob Graham, the Director of Training at Learning Craft, and I wanted to take a few minutes and show you how we can create programs that will change how an object appears on the stage. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. I have here a program called Bewildered Cat, and what I'm going to do with my Bewildered Cat is I'm going to run it, and if I click on each one of these buttons, I have Resize and Alpha and Move and Rotate. By clicking on each one of these, it allows me to change the characteristics of this object that's sitting here on the stage. I can move it around randomly. I can also go in here, let's get it back on the stage so we can see it, and change its alpha settings. I can make it more or less transparent depending on the number that's being generated every time I click on this button. I can also resize it, make it a little bit smaller, flatter, taller, all sorts of things that I can do to, in essence, really bewilder this cat. Now, if you want to follow along at home, feel free to join by going to www.learningcraft.com forward slash flash kits forward slash, and in this case, you're looking for a file called bewilderedcat.zip. Now, what the Bewildered Cat Kit will provide you is basically a number of buttons as well as our cat graphic, and uh, we're going to put everything together. To begin with, I have two layers over here. One is going to be the layer in which I put the cat graphic. Now, in this case, I'm going to take this object here, which is a cat. That sits right there. And what I want to do with this cat is I want to change it. Right now, it's just a graphic. And the reason I want to change it is because I want to be able to talk to it over the course of this program. And I cannot talk to an object. However, I can talk to a, a movie clip. So the first thing I want to do is change this in to a movie clip of sorts. So to do that, I'm going to click on the cat to select it, and I'm going to go over here to the Modify menu, and I'm going to say Convert to Symbol. Now once again, I have a variety of choices here, but I do want to select Movie Clip, and let me just call this Cat Graphic. And there it is. Now if I look over here in my library, I now have this Movie Clip object called Cat Graphic, which is based on this object here, which was named Flash Zero originally. But now, because I have this and have put it on my stage, I can go in and give it a name. Now, because it's named Cat Graphic over here, doesn't necessarily mean that it's named Cat Graphic when it's on the stage, because this over here is the master object, and this here is a, an instance of it. Think of it as a clone. I've made a copy and put it out here, but it's a, it's a different object. So it means it's unique and can have a unique name. In order to name my movie clip, I'm going to go down here to my Properties window, and I'm going to keep it simple and just say, I'm going to name you Cat. So now, if I want to refer to this object in particular, I can just say, hey, cat, I want you to do the following. The next thing I want to do is I want to go in and I have a layer here for my buttons. I want to make sure I select that blank keyframe. And I'm going to go and drag the buttons out of my library area and put them here across the bottom of the stage area. Now, it's important that we put the buttons layer above the cat layer because as the cat moves around, if, for example, the cat layer ended up on top of the buttons layer, then we may have a problem if the cat ever stopped on top of a button we needed to reach. We wouldn't be able to do it because the cat would be in the way. Now I have these four buttons. I might need a little help positioning them because eyeballing it is kind of tough, but I've dragged them to the rough place I want them to be. And now I'm going to go over here to my Align Tools, and I'm going to use the Align Top Edge to bring them all up even with one another. And then I'm going to use Distribute Horizontal Center so that it spreads them all evenly from one another and gives me a much better look and feel. That looks nice. Okay, let's talk about how we can put things together here. To begin with, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start by selecting the Resize button. Now what the Resize button will allow us to do is to go in and change the parameters of how the cat appears on the stage. Basically, it's width and height values. And the way we do this, I'm going to select that and I'm going to go into my Actions menu here. We need to first determine some sort of criteria that's going to be used to determine whether or not to run the script. So I'm going to start by typing in On, and I'm going to put an open parenthesis. And this gives me a pull-down list of various possibilities. Well, the one I want to select is Release. And what this means is that when the user lets go of their mouse button, releases it, then I want you to execute the following script. Well, the script that I'm looking for in this case is going to be based upon generating some random numbers to determine what the width and height values of the cat will be. I'm going to start by declaring a variable. And if you're not familiar with variables, I encourage you to go check out some of the variable lessons that I've created that are sitting around on YouTube that will walk you through that process. In this case, the variable I want to create is something, let's just call it cat width. Okay? So I've created a brand new container and I've given it a unique name. I'm calling it cat width. In this case, I'm going to make it equal to a random number. 
Now also, if you are interested in learning about number randomization, you can also find another lesson that I've created on YouTube that will help you out there as well. In this case, we want to go in and we're going to create a random value by starting with a math function. And we can, once again, either go through the scrolling list after the dot we put in here and say, I'm looking for random, or we could just type it in like this. Now what a random value is going to do is it's going to take whatever number we give to it and it's going to give us a range of values. And the way we do this, first of all, I'm going to put in a multiplication symbol there, an asterisk, and I'm going to give it a starting value. I'm going to say I want the math random to be based upon whatever value we're going to generate out of 200. Now in Flash, what that means is anything between the numbers 0 and 199 will be generated. Now since I don't want to generate a value of zero at all, because that would mean my cat would pretty much disappear, I want to make sure that any value that comes up is actually going to be a positive integer of some sort. So that basically means I want the numbers 1 through 200. And the way I'm going to do that is by just adding a 1 to anything that gets generated in this context. Now also with this particular example, I may not want to have a long number. What the math random will generate here is basically a, a number between 0 and 199, add 1 to it, but it also has a decimal point with about 15 trailing numbers. And I may just want to truncate it and say, just give me the whole number, I don't care about the decimal. In which case, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to, at the beginning here, I'm going to say math, in this case, I want to ask it to truncate it, so I say math floor. I'm going to put in parentheses around this chunk of code, and it's part of an order of operations thing that you maybe remember from high school algebra, which basically says, hey, do what's ever inside the parentheses first, and then apply that to the other function. So we're going to generate a number, and then we're going to truncate it. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end of this line that tells ActionScript that I am done with this particular command. Now we've already done this hard work. We might as well take advantage of it. I'm going to go here and select that. I'm going to copy it and paste it on the line below. And in this case, instead of measuring for cat width, I'm just going to measure for cat height. And there we go. And I'm going to use the same criteria, the same randomizer, based on 200 plus 1 to get to the answer that I want. So we've gone out, we've generated two random numbers that will be used to determine what the new shape and size of the cat will be. What we need to do now is apply it to the cat so the cat understands how it's supposed to change. Well, since we named the cat, we can now talk to it directly and we can say, hey, cat. What I want you to do is I want you to go and I want you to change your width. And this is a command in ActionScript that allows us to apply changing criteria to an object that is a movie clip. And I'm going to say the width value is going to be equal to whatever we created and stored in this variable cat width. And I'm going to do the same thing for the height. I'm going to say, hey, cat, I want you to take your height value and I want you to make it equal whatever the value of cat height is. And then finally at the end I need to go and put in a closed curly bracket. By the way, you need to have an open curly bracket here. That's not a parenthesis. That's a curly bracket and these serve as bookends. So basically on release, everything between these two brackets, that's what I want you to do. That's the script. Okay, so we should be all set to go. We can always go in here and click on the blue check marks to check our syntax. It tells us that there are no errors, which is always good news. And now if we go out here and run this program by hitting Control Enter, let's see what happens when we click on the Resize button. And it looks like we're successful. So now it's generating random values for width and height, and our cat is becoming shorter and squatter and sometimes incredibly thin. So that's excellent. Okay, now I'm going to continue this in another video, so feel free to come back and look and find part two of the Bewildered Cat, and we'll put in the Move and Rotate features. By the way, if I can help you at LearningCraft or anyone here at LearningCraft can assist you in your training needs on whether it be on media development or in online advertising functionalities, technologies, please let us know. We can be reached very easily at www.learningcraft.com. This is Rob Graham and I'll see you at the other part of this video.